So I, I was just crazy about cars all my life. And at the same time, I'm also a technology guy. So I was always interested in electronics and, uh, but cars were just, I don't know, since I was born, I was crazy about cars. When I turned 18, I bought a 1984 BMW 3 Series, an old car, because that was the easiest way to start racing. I wanted to go to drift races and like you just need an old car with a rear wheel drive and a few spare tires and that's it to start drifting. So I did that, but the engine blew up uh, very soon after that and I actually wanted to improve the car. So I wanted to throw in a much bigger engine from a newer car, but it was uh, very expensive to do that and so on. So I thought when already doing this, let's do something special. And being from Croatia, I read a lot about Nikola Tesla. As you know, he invented the alternating car and electric motor that we are basically using in so many applications today. So I was always thinking about how to combine electronics and cars and how to use the advantages of the electric motor, which is compared to a combustion engine, such a perfect machine. It's so much better in every regard. And I was wondering why is nobody using the advantages of an electric motor, not just to make a eco-friendly car, but actually something that makes fun and it's exciting and so on. So I removed the combustion engine from this BMW and decided to make it into an electric car to race and to show people that electric cars can be exciting and interesting. That's what I did. I went to my garage and within six months or so I had a forklift motor inside, some old batteries, slammed it together and started racing and nobody ever saw an electric car on these racetracks and everybody was wondering what's going on and like is this guy crazy and what the hell is he doing with the electric car on the racetrack and the car had lots of problems at the beginning of course I was doing it for the first time I had problems and so on but after some time the car became better and better I improved it the car became faster and faster I started winning in 2011 I broke five FIA and Guinness World Records but I basically wanted to build my own car. Uh, I was inspired by Horatio Pagani and by Christian von Königsegg from Sweden and Horatio from Italy. And I knew that it's super hard to make a car. I knew that hundreds of people have tried and failed, but I knew that those two guys uh, actually made it. And they are pretty much the only guys who built a car company from a garage in the last 50 years. And I said, you know, they did it, so I'll try it as well. I actually contacted Horatio already at that time and Christian as well. I showed them the BMW I was doing and so on. So I founded a company with the aim to build the first electric hypercar and to show the world that electric cars can be more than, you know, eco-friendly, ugly boxes. But it was a long journey since then. It took 10 years to get where we are now. And we are still at the beginning, so it's super tough to make cars, to get the investors, to get the know-how, especially because we are in Croatia, where there is no car industry, so we had to learn everything from scratch. And we basically became, in order to survive at the very beginning, a technology company, or we started to, to work for other car companies, like um, building prototypes for them, developing prototypes to survive. And that's the only reason why we still exist today. If you were just sticking to making cars, we wouldn't have gotten the investors interested because investors see the supercar business as very risky and so on. But the technology business, they were interested in that. So the technology business basically, uh, a little bit like the history of Ferrari. So Enzo Ferrari wanted to do race cars. He didn't care about road cars, but he had to build road cars to finance his race cars. Here it's similar, like I wanted to build a road car but I had the technology business to pay for that. So one worked with the other quite well, but at the beginning we, we didn't have the time and money to really focus on our cars because we had to survive by doing stuff for other companies. And now we are over 600 people. We have partners like Porsche and Hyundai and Kia who have invested over 150 million euros in the company. We are now developing our second car, the C2, after the Concept One, which we presented in 2011. So now the C2 is coming to the market and we are at the same time trying to do two very difficult things. On one side, be a car company with our own car, but very small volume, exclusive niche. And on the other side, help big car companies to go electric and hybrid by developing and producing batteries and powertrains for them. My favorite car ever. Well, of course I have to say Rimac, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, I think, you know, if I had a lot of money, I would probably, uh, I, I have a list of cars that I would put in my garage. Long, it's very long. 
But if I had to choose one, I think I love the, the E30 uh, M3. Uh, so 1988 model. So that's, that's a really nice car. I'm a car guy. So regardless if it's a combustion engine car or hybrid or electric, currently my garage would be probably out of 30 cars that I would buy, probably more, I don't know, 25 would probably be just combustion engine cars, maybe a few hybrids and maybe one or two electric cars, because I don't think there are electric cars out there still that are really made by car guys and for car guys. So this still needs to happen and we are trying to accelerate that a little bit. But classic cars, you know, if you go to Pebble Beach, for example, which is one of the big exhibitions for cars, an interesting thing I learned there is actually that the sales of these cars, old, very old cars, is dropping year by year. And I was wondering, why is that happening? And then one guy explained it to me. So you are basically, you know, intrigued by those cars that you were looking up to when you were a child, to put it up on your walls and to read in articles and so on. So when you are older, and make money, like all of these guys have a lot of money, of course, to buy such cars, and then they fulfill their childhood dream. But they don't care about cars from before they were born, really. So it's for me as well like that. Like, I love cars from the 80s, from the 90s, from the early 2000s. I would maybe have a Gullwing SL or something like that. That's really cool, like older cars. But like pre-war cars, like pre-1945 or something like that, that's not interesting for me. Maybe one just to have it like a, you know, example of engineering and how it all started just of a historic value. But uh, I think that uh, most people care for cars from their youth and it's pretty similar with me. So I like those, let's say, young timers on the verge of being an old timer. Uh, I build electric hypercars not just for the sake of being electric or for the purpose of making it easier to use. Yes, there are some things like that you can do to make the power more accessible and more usable and easier to use. But combustion cars have come a long way. Like now you can drive a Bugatti Chiron with 1,500 horsepower and you can give it to your grandma and she will know how to use it. The cars have become very civil in a way. But uh, I believe that really you can do things that are not possible with a traditional powertrain. So having, for example, four motors like we have, you can very precisely control every one. For, therefore, you very precisely control each wheel. And with that, you just have unlimited possibilities. Then the acceleration that you have, the center of gravity that you can achieve. Of course, also some downsides like thermal limitations, like it's very hard to cool the syst all the systems, the batteries, the motors and so on. Uh, on track usage, uh, it's uh, hard to keep the weight low. So weight is currently disadvantage, but taking disadvantages and advantages into consideration, currently I think you can really make something exciting and, and interesting and different. It doesn't mean that it's, there's no space to coexist with combustion engine cars. So if you look at the you know, supercar today, they are all uh, pretty much rear engined. Um, they have either four wheel drive or, or rear wheel drive. They are turbocharged or not turbocharged. So for, for a customer, they might look as very different cars, but fundamentally, they're not so different. But then you have something like the C2, which is designed around this idea of building the best possible electric hypercar based on the fundamentals of the technology. It's so different and gives you so much opportunity. And it's not, let's say, there to kill all the others, but it's an interesting alternative because how many times in your life can you really have a totally different experience? So when you go from a Ferrari to a Lamborghini, both cars are good and interesting and can give you a slightly different experience. But when you go from a Ferrari or Lamborghini to a Rima C2, it's a totally different experience. So that's why what it's about is really to do, you know, things that are not possible with a traditional poetry and push the limits in that regard. I think that car ownership in general will disappear, generally speaking. And I have a good analogy to that, like probably your grandparents and my grandparents were having horses and they were riding horses and using them for the field and whatever. I don't know how to ride a horse and I don't have a horse, but there are people that still have horses, people that love horses. I don't care about horses. And the same thing today, like I will always have a car, 
But probably most people in 30 years, 40, 50 years will not have a car because it's expensive, inconvenient. The far majority of people will live in very dense populated areas in, in big cities where uh, owning a car will be totally impractical. People will care less about it as a symbol of freedom or wealth because at that time mobility will be more accessible and different. Car ownership in general will disappear. Combustion engine cars will disappear as well, I believe. Quite soon um, this will start happening and many big car companies have announced that they are stopping to develop combustion engines. Many countries have already announced that they will ban sales of new combustion engine cars in 2020, in 2013, 2040 and so on. So this is coming and I think it's inevitable. But I think, you know, if we could look at it also from a positive perspective. So the horse was basically saved from hard work by the tractor. So you didn't use horses anymore for the hard work and the horse became basically a hobby, um, luxury item, let's say. And the same could happen with cars. So those cars that will remain in 30, 40 years will probably be not for the purpose of getting from point A to point B. This will be done in autonomous drive pods, I guess, which will be electric for sure. It doesn't make sense that they are combustion engine. But there will be these race horses. Just the question is how many people will still care about cars at that time, where you will be restricted to really use them. Maybe not on the road, just like you don't use horses on the road anymore, but you have you know, dedicated areas to use horses. So I think that's a quite good analogy that could happen with cars in the future. If the combustion engine car still has a future in that space, I guess yes, but for a very limited, um, I would say, enthusiast core. So of course cars got much more refined today and there is much, they are much more complex and uh, much more gimmicks and you know car guys are usually looking back to those times with nostalgia and saying wow these were really the good cars I don't really agree with that I think that cars have become so good and so complex and I, I understand I would say to a high degree what it takes to develop a car and I admire the complexity of such products and it's actually the car is actually incredibly cheap incredibly cheap when you look at it what it takes to develop a car you know, you buy a house or, or a house costs maybe a few hundred thousand euros, but the car doesn't. A normal car costs maybe 30, 40,000 euros. Um, but to develop that car, there have been billions and billions spent to develop that car. It's such a complex machine, incredibly complex. And some people take this complexity as something bad. I think that you can use the complexity to make a better car to make a car that's also fun and exciting and safe at the same time and usable and so on, reliable. People often think like, oh, the old Mercedes or whatever, they could you know, work forever. I don't agree. Today, the cars are, are much higher quality. So I'm not one of these guys that really looks at you know, these old times with nostalgia and thinking like, oh, if I could go back in time and do things in, in, in that time. You know? I'm also a little bit, you know, looking at my, my big heroes from the time, Pagani and Koenigsegg. They started at a time when it was much simpler to be competitive in the, in the car industry. When the regulations were, were lower, when the expectations of the customers were lower. For example, you know, at that time there was no infotainment. You just put an aftermarket radio in your car. Now the infotainment is a whole topic, connectivity lots of things that you have to get right, lots of things that, you know, the user experience is very involving and so on. So just the infotainment today is as complex as a whole car 60, 70 years ago. And for me, that's interesting. So if I could choose to go back to, you know, 70 years before or 70 years in the future, I would go in the future. I'm, I'm a guy who uh, thinks that things are getting better. Uh, and, you know, you have to be optimistic, I think. <laughs>
Do I, I, you're the guy from that is doing all the YouTube videos, right? With the oh, I was watching your uh, great uh, Bugatti uh, video, the whole thing with the the, the, car, the race cars on the road going. Road going, road going. You were also yeah. interviewing the EV110. You were, yeah, yeah. but you were also interviewing the, the ex CEO, and stuff. I was watching all of that. You had like a English subtitle. Yeah. Yeah, I'm watching your videos quite often. <laughs> it's cool.